Hello and welcome to the United Mates Football Podcast. My name is Joe and as always I'm joined by my co-host Kaitel and we're also joined by a very special guest. So a big welcome to the podcast to Flav, the founder of the Fighting Cock podcast. Yep. Arguably, actually, in my opinion, it is the most popular Tottenham Hotspur podcast in existence. Definitely. Existing. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Definitely but. is, I think. <laughs> I, don't, I actually don't know if it is, but um, it's up there. It's got to be up there somewhere. Yeah, no, we'll say it is. Um, and Flav also, <laughs> um, Flav also co-hosts 15 Minutes um, with another yeah. former um, guest of ours, Chris Miller, a.k.a. Windy Coys. And on top of that, Flav's involved in a, a number of other projects too. So Flav, um, it's mm. a pleasure to have you on the podcast. How are you? Uh, I'm really good. Really good, considering. Um, obviously, I think everybody says this and it's the way you start all these kind of conversations, but the world's a funny place at the moment and just feel very grateful and blessed to be in a situation where, um, you know, I've got my family around me, very happy and, um, you know, reacting to the situation we find ourselves in and finding a way about being creative and finding new ways to work. And obviously, while it's been challenging for everybody, some more than others, obviously, for obvious reasons, um, I've found uh, new ways to work and, and have, have been probably more productive in the last year than I ever have been. So, um, yeah, I'm very good, mate. I'm very good. Awesome. Well, let the good times roll. It's uh, it's Kai here. Hey, Flav. Really good to have hey, you with us. Um, Cheers. We yeah tend to like to start the show with an icebreaker. And I noticed not too long ago that you tweeted about um, things that will die out when the old people go. So <laughs> <laughs> quite a good uh, one. Um, but we're going to yeah. flip that a, a little bit. And so for today's icebreaker, what I want to know is uh, for each of us, what do we wish had never been invented or popularized by our younger generations? So I'll go yeah. first. And personally, I could quite happily live in a world without face tattoos. But Flav, what about you? Uh, my little brother, Alex, has face tattoos. <laughs> Ooh, well, <I> <laughs> uh, but not, not in the kind of little pump kind of way. Uh, he has just one on his, on his side. Uh, I'm, I, likewise, I think they look terrible. Uh, I've got tattoo. I've got practically my entire arm done and my back done. And I did it when I was young. If I could... Click, flick, flick a switch and, and they'd be gone I probably would do it but they don't bother me that much but I get it like face is a, a different thing altogether my brother's chosen a path of thespianism and creativity and never ever plans like if anybody on in on this earth who is least suited to a desk job it's my little brother so you know he's finding his own way and he um he uh you know it's he can get away with it but it's a tiny tiny thing it isn't like having whatever uh post malone has on his face yeah face tats i can I'm, i can deal with tiktok is the one for me though now tiktok is something that i i mean i'm aware of but i know because i can hear it constantly in my house like two kids 10 and 12 and they're in it they're they're watching tiktok all the time and it's just like without social media and new media, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. And I wouldn't be able to have carved a career for myself doing what I do. But TikTok's bad and it's got, it's like the work of the devil. It's like, there's it's not nonsense. Good. No, that is terrible. I hate it. Um, so yeah, TikTok would be the one I would definitely just, if I could again, click my fingers and it'd be gone. I know the kids wouldn't be too happy. They love it. Yeah, I mean, if we're just clicking fingers and getting rid of things, I have a few tattoos myself that I probably wouldn't, <laughs> wouldn't have gotten in the first place. But uh, Joe, speaking of the the younger generations, what, what are you not a fan of? What would you like to get rid of? <laughs> you know, I, I don't have any tattoos, but um, I guess I get I don't know if this is totally fair to put this on the younger generations um, or about Gen, Gen Z, Gen Z, but um, cancel culture. Not yep. a fan of that. I mean, there's a time and place for it, for, for you know, for some individuals. But I feel, um, I feel that maybe, yeah, you know, we're living in a world where cancel culture has gone a bit too far. But I think we won't, we won't go too far down that rabbit hole because we've got more fun and interesting things to speak about. So, um, moving on from the icebreaker, it is now time for a few more personal questions for Flav. So earlier on, I mentioned Flav that you're the founder of the Fighting Cock podcast, yep. which, um, incidentally, is the the first ever football podcast I ever listened to back when it started in 2011, back when yep. I was 17. Um, and in, oh. um, 
in yeah in the 10 years um you've been running the podcast um how, how would you say that the show has evolved and also how has the kind of wider football podcast genre as a whole evolved during that time um the show i wouldn't say the show's evolved that much really um we started it back when there was no football podcast culture really there was, in terms of Spurs, there was one, there was Spurs show. And I think there was another one called Cock on Ball, um, which died out. And then it was just the two of us, really. And we were at the start of a wave of popularity around podcasts that just carried us along. I, I don't think, honestly, think if we started now, right now, it wouldn't take off. We might get, we might get up to a thousand listens or a couple of thousand listens because Spurs is such a an easy thing to talk about. And there's so many people out there that are interested in Tottenham that are looking for podcasts that gradually, if we can, did what we did now, that we might build a small following, a small in inverted commas. But uh, yeah, we were really lucky. We started at the right time. And um, in the same, same way that YouTubers, you start at the right time back in the day, blew up and they can't fail now because they become habits in people's lives. So regardless of the stuff they put out, generally there'll be a fan base there that support them. And it's interesting actually about the cancel culture that, that that these these personalities survive that cancel culture, and some might argue is a good thing, um, because of, of of this um, this how much time people have invested in, and I think that's the same for the fighting cock, and that's why people are, are that we haven't changed a great deal. We're still as stupid as we were, and talk about stupid things and things that make us laugh, and the things that we laugh about in the pub, we just transfer that to the podcast. So. I, I don't think we've changed a great deal. We've become more aware, though, um, that you know, the bigger your audience grows, the more responsibility you have to ensure that what you say is within the realms of decency. Uh, and as you know, pub conversations you have in the pub, you say things to your mates in a pub that you wouldn't dream of saying to someone outside your social group, but you know because they know you, you can get away with it because... They understand who you are and they know you and they they appreciate where you're coming from. That's not to say I'm saying mad shit in a pub, like <laughs> all kinds of stuff. I'm just saying that, you know, in your social group, in WhatsApp groups, you're, you're allowed to be the on the peripheries of, 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 of who you appear to be to people that you don't know, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah, there's been a couple of occasions over the last 10 years that have made us take a step back and think, actually, what is the impact of what we're saying? You know, what, you know, we used to talk freely about drugs and drug use. We don't do that as much anymore, if at all. And if we do, we offer massive caveats. So it's just better off left alone. And we've got in trouble. You know, people, there's been times in the past where we've been accused of misogyny. And looking back at the time, it probably wasn't the greatest thing to say. But you, you've got your mates around you, you forget the mics on, you're pissed up. And you say stuff. So I, I would say over the year we've become much more con over the years become much more conscious, and um, and try to make sure that we don't needlessly offend someone unless someone has a point that they want to make that they vehemently agree in. But generally, we just want to make people laugh, and that's what we've tried to do over the years. Um, in terms of the podcast, um, I mean, it's exploded, and it's, it's it became it was a genre of media in its own right, and it's become more and more that over over the years you know everybody has a podcast every celebrity has a podcast there are between 50 and 60 Tottenham Hotspur podcasts alone our club alone um, I think every supporters group in the state seems to have a podcast um, there are there are Spurs podcasts that are doing things differently to us um, most of them actually and um, and some of them have been really successful you look at what last word on Spurs have done I would say the three main Big pods now are still the Spurs show, us and and Last Word on Spurs. And to be fair to Last Word on Spurs, they found a niche for themselves in that it was we, we're going to just talk about Spurs. Our Twitter feed is going to be as you know within the realms of uh, sort of normal news. If you like the reporting on news. The, the, the stuff they tweet is for a particular audience and there's a massive appetite for it. So they found a niche for themselves and they've done really well. They work hard as well. They put out four podcasts a week. They're tweeting constantly. I don't know how they have a social life, to be honest. I don't know if you see our social media, we might tweet around the game uh, a couple of times a week, but, you know, passing thought really.
So it, it's it's good. The you know the more podcasts there are means that the market's still there and people are interested in it. But widely, it's um it's a saturated market now, and and people out there with really good podcasts, really having really good conversations, might not get seen because there's so many podcasts out there. Like you mentioned, 15 minutes at the start, which is a pod I do with with Wendy, who does the extra inch. Um, like I, I think that's a good podcast. I think we do a good job. But even with our audiences of our respective podcasts, we're still struggling to get it up to a point where it becomes worthwhile commercially. Not that that's not what drives us, right? And and for any podcast you produce, it shouldn't be about that. It can never be about that. It should be about the joy of doing it, having the conversations. But um, because it takes time and we're all busy, you have to allocate a certain part of your week where you think it like is this worthwhile? And um and generally, that's about numbers. So it's a struggle. The point is, is we're not going to not do 50 minutes. The point is, even with our advantages of having an established audience, it's still difficult. Well, um, sticking on 15 minutes and in the vein of that sort of like um, labor of love um, speak that it sounded like you're getting at. Um, yeah. You obviously record that with, as Joe was mentioning, and you mentioned as well, one of our former guests, Wendy Coys, a.k.a. Chris, Chris Miller. Um, so right, yeah. you couldn't really put that podcast into one genre if you try it, it's about as diverse of a conversation as you could get. And um, by yeah. its very nature, you're talking about a different thing every time from episode to episode. So on that note, and given that you've been doing um, the football podcasting for about a decade or so now, do you have a preference between talking and podcasting about football? Or yeah, after all these years, is it more fun to just talk about life, essentially, like you do on 15 minutes? Absolutely have a preference to not talk about football. Um yeah, it's not, it's not, it's, we've been doing the fighting cop for 10 years and I love doing it. I really do. But there's so, I mean, there's only so many times you can talk about why Deli Ali isn't in the team or how good Harry, Harry Kane is or why Jose Mourinho's football is boring before having that conversation becomes in itself boring. So we try and, we try and make it as much about the chemistry between us all and, and the fact that everyone on that podcast is a friend of mine legitimately. That, um, that that that's what drives it forward. And that's what the difference between the fighting cock, I think, and other podcasts uh, in terms of Spurs is that, that we, we there's a genuine affection and bond between us all on the pod. And if you find that when you see that pod, podcasts become successful, generally people are invested in the people. So people, the listeners are invested. They want to be a part of the conversation. If you can do, produce a podcast and someone's listening to it and wants to be a part of the podcast, you can't lose. And that's, that's what people should strive to, to achieve, really. Um, but yeah, uh, given that my career is, is, is now about talking and has been for the last few years, it's nice to, 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 I mean, 15 minutes was born out of that frustration to talk about other things. And like you say, it's that in the extreme. So we've, we've produced about 40 episodes and everyone's a different subject. And it's sometimes difficult to find things that we can both talk about for 15 minutes, but because me and Chris have known each other for such a long time, it isn't, it's not the hardest thing in the world, but it is refreshing. Like I like talking about first girlfriends. It's funny. I like talking about puberty, male grooming we've done this week. And it's one of the funniest ones we've done because Chris goes into detail about how he grew, grooms these I, never regions and the position he arches his back earlier, in. Yeah. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. And you can't, like that's, thing. That, yeah, that's easy. It's easy to do. It's fun to do. And, and uh, yeah, laughing's important, especially the fighting cock is important. But it's yeah, yes, it's, it's I'm, I'm producing another podcast called No Holds Barred. Over over lockdown, I've produced around I'd say about thirty five episodes, which are forty five to an hour long. With normal people who have interesting stories, so I talk to a porn star, I talk to a bloke who run an escort agency, I talk to a nurse that works on a COVID ward. I spoke to a bloke who was a croupier in a, um, a massively uh, high roller casino in London, um, comedians. And it was that drive to have normal conversations that have some, that have more depth than a conversation about whether or not Spurs are awful. So yeah, yeah, that strive to talk about other stuff is really, it's something that I'm, I'm constantly looking to do. I think we try to fit it in here as well, because you can get a bit, overwhelmed with too much football chat considering that you mentioned the numbers of podcasts out there that are already 
analyzing every team and um, different supporters groups in different countries doing the same thing, it can get a bit saturated. But mm. more the merrier, I suppose. Um, sticking with football, though, and the Fighting Cock podcast, I know that you typically end that um, by personally yourself, Flav, you would host a, a Spurs quiz. So so in recent years, yeah, I mean, recent last last eight weeks or so, we've had a quiz on just to try and mix things up a bit. Yeah, but it's proved quite popular. Yeah, we're big fans of of quizzes and trivia in general. So whilst we're not at the end of the episode, I did figure we would flip the script. And uh, instead of you asking the the quiz questions (laughs) or being the quiz master, I've got a game for you guys. So if you're listening as well, play along. Um, The name of the game is Who Are You? And based off of one initial clue, it's going to be up to you guys to guess the mystery player that I've chosen. So today's are all Spurs related. And you can- I do caveat every time that I'm no good at this stuff. And I, and I, (laughs) So look, I'm not saying I'm good at it. I'm awful, but yeah, go on, crack on. I'll give it a go. Well, you you got the caveat in, and if it ends up being a, a no a no go, we'll just we'll just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yeah, you guys can ask as many as many questions as you need. But this first player, Spurs related, remember, was described by the manager who signed him, amongst other things, as a hardworking, honest player with a good goal scoring record. He then proceeded to score no goals for Spurs. Uh, so we we can ask any questions we like. Yeah, any questions. Uh, what was the manager who said it? Who was that? Would have been uh, Martin Yoll. Oh, I think is is it Kai? Is he Polish? Yeah, yeah. Joe's got it. <laughs> yeah, Gregor's Raziak. It was indeed. <laughs> I thought you said a. Ma- uh, did you say midfielder? I I don't think I mentioned the position. And if anything, actually, in the quote, I think uh, Martin so Yolman went on to say that he was like a, a strong target man. So I didn't want to include that to give away he the was, position. But Joe got it anyway. I, I don't. Yeah, I don't, he's he was awful. Was so bad. <laughs> All right, I've yeah. got a couple more for you guys. Um, cool. And I'll, I'll give you a kind of for the next two as well. I think between all of these guys, they played like less than 10 times for Spurs and none of them scored any goals. Um, so this guy falls into that category as well. But essentially, he's currently without a club, I believe. Um, so that would be my clue. But he's still playing, I guess, if that counts. Oh, um, has he played for Hull in his career at some point? <laughs> yeah, Joe's really on top, <laughs> on top of these. Mate, I have no idea where you you've got. So the clue, your clue was he, he played for Spurs and he never scored a goal. Is that all you... And he's currently without a club. Um, wait, is that all we've got to go on? Yeah, yeah. I think Joe's got it. Joe's got wait, it. But wait, I've got, I've got some more clues for for Flav if you need them. Go on, Joe. Yeah, I, def- I definitely need them. But I'm I'm surprised. How I don't know how Joe has got the right answer. But wait, I didn't know the bit about that he hasn't scored a goal for Tottenham. As far as I know, he made one appearance in any form oh. of competition for for Spurs. Oh, okay. I thought it was Tom Huddleston, but I'm oh, just glad. Oh, okay. Joe doesn't have it. No, I don't have it. Don't. So, so the clues are that there's a player <laughs> who played for Spurs who doesn't have a club and never scored a goal for us. That's it. And, he, <laughs> and well, Joe's discovered that he played for Hull as well. You're going to unearth these clues. Oh, going. Um, is, did he play for Nottingham Forest last year? Yeah, he did. Yeah, John Bostock. It was indeed. <laughs> how, Joe, how have you got that? <laughs> because I... Are you I sharing know, answers? I know, Fard. No, no. We're just, we're just massive nerds. That's just... <laughs> so, I tell you what, if you carry on on this vein, you should come on the quiz. I, you know what? I've been, I've been thinking about trying to get on that quiz. Um, there's a massive list. Like, I'm not just joking. I... There's like 25 people that have asked to come on. But there's two lads that said they got eight out of 10 last week. And out of the two people, they got one answer right out of 10. <laughs> but if you're this, if you can get that John Bostock from he doesn't play for Spurs, he, he, no, he, he doesn't have a club, he played for Spurs but never scored a goal, and you went straight to John Bostock practically. I'm amazed. This is, <laughs> this is our lives, this is all we, yeah. Kai, we actually, weirdly, this. you were even though you're an Arsenal fan, you were at that game when he played Zagreb when he was, oh, yeah, six. that's true. I did come to the to White Hart. you were there, Kai. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, well, I do have one last one for you, and honestly, as far as I'm concerned, he's the most obscure of the three. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Here we if go. Was Raja Here we go. And John Bostock weren't, yeah, weren't enough for you guys. As uh, for this guy, a clue to start off with. To my knowledge, he's one of two players from this country that have played for Spurs ever. Oh, um, is the country South Africa? What? Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes it is South Africa oh you know what then actually I take that back 
because it would be three players then in that case who I think have played for Spurs. From oh that yeah, game. you're right. You're right. <laughs> so I, I know two of them, but they scored. Both of them scored. Oh, well, you, then it's the I know one. Pinar and Mabizela. Uh, I, it, I, it is the third one. It is yeah. the third one, Flav. It's um, South African. Never, never played for Spurs. Never played for Spurs. But he was, yeah, Har- Harry Redknapp signed him, Flav. And then he just was there. And... He played for Ipswich. And I think he had loans at a couple of other English clubs. And now he's back in South Africa. That's going to help. <laughs> if you follow South African football, yeah, you'll know. Yeah, um, he scored at the World Cup though. He did, he has done that. Just, yeah. I, 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 Joe, I'm never going to get this. Who is it? It's Bongani Kumalo. Oh, he was with he? us about ten years as well. <laughs> just getting yeah. loaned out to Chesterfield and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. He was just he was just kind of there and not not doing much. Um, like the Lucas Piazon of, of Spurs, who finally <laughs> has left Chelsea after I think a decade or so. Yeah. Wow, um, that was really hard. That's hard. I, I thought our quiz was hard. That was that was ridiculous. Obviously not for Joe, who just pissed it. But <laughs> well, yeah, maybe that's my ticket onto the fighting cock quiz. But um... it may it may need to be. I think that there's definitely something here. But the problem is, we've got winner stays on. If you're that good, will you ever leave? That's the thing. Oh God, yeah, no, I don't know, I don't know about that. But um, <laughs> we'll I know, I know you speak about um, Spurs a lot, Flav. But we're gonna, we're going to speak about Spurs a, a little okay. bit more now. So. Yeah. Um, Obviously, um, we just come off the back of a, a big three-one win over Sheffield United, and obviously, what? Well, it's probably going to be the goal of the season from Tangi and Dombele. I know you've spoken about it. I mean, just what a goal that was. Um, yeah. And whilst our recent form has it's been hit and miss, um, as you know, we've been throwing away easy points in games. We do currently sit in fifth at the time of the recording. We're just one point off fourth. I think Liverpool might be playing tonight, so that might change. But my question to you, Flav, is at this point in the season, would you say you're content with where we are in the league? Oh, it's such a difficult question. A league position, yes, I am content. Um, If you'd have given me this before the season started, I would have taken it. Um... Because it's you know we might be one point off fourth, but we're within touching distance of the title, the league league leaders. We spent five weeks of this year or four weeks of this year top of the league. That's the longest we've spent top probably since eighty seven. Um, but having gone through and experiencing the football, it's really difficult because when we win. And I'm not saying anything that we all haven't heard, especially as Spurs fans. When we win, it's fine. When we beat Sheffield United, you walk away from that thinking, played well, um, deserved the result, I'll be against the weak side. But when you get a draw and it doesn't work under Mourinho, there's very little wiggle room. You know, it's just either despair or joy and there's nowhere in between. And the in-between for football fans is the comfort zone. It's where you genuinely sit most of the time. Most people don't see their teams win trophies. You know, the Tottenham Hotspur's obsession and their fans' obsession and the media's obsession without us winning the trophy is ridiculous because most teams don't win trophies. Teams with the most money win trophies. You know, you look at who won the FA Cup, Byron Wigan, over the years, it's the the biggest team. So Spurs need to, you know, hold themselves up at, at, at that level. But we've only been there since Pochettino took over. So that's seven years, eight years where we within our rights to have won a trophy. And we came close a number of times, even the major ones, right? So I guess the point I'm getting at is that while the football is a problem, you have to believe in the fact that Jose Mourinho will deliver what he's delivered to every club he's ever managed. And that's cups. So I'm happy, although aware that we could be on the brink of something horrible at any point, or we could go on and do really well this season. Um, but it's going to be a, a on or off switch in terms of how satisfied we are on, depending on the last result. But, you know, we, we beat Sheffield United, we drew against Fulham, we beat Leeds, we have every chance of beating Liverpool at home. You know, we played well against them at, at Anfield and with their defensive line being what it is, Henderson and Fabino, Fabino, like they get a, and a Henderson as, as a centre-back is one thing and he's doing a good job, but Fabino is a centre-back by all intents and purposes. He's better as a CDM probably. And most football fans have you say that, but he can play right back and he can also play centre-back with ease. So they're not as weak as people make out, but there's something, I don't want to say this too soon, but there's, there's something not quite there 
with Liverpool that that was there last season. And I think the way we play, especially if we do sit back and counter, counter that we will be able to, to beat them. And if, if we do beat Liverpool, that will likely either, you know, if they win tonight, then, uh, you know, we'll be a, a point behind if we, even if we beat them. But the momentum and the, the recent results will look all the more fondly. And people, I think if we do beat Liverpool at home, people will start talk, t- talking about us as contenders is the way the media goes. Speaking of contenders, and I guess jumping back to trophy talk, you guys have qualified for a, a final. You're in the Carabao Cup final against City. What would success look like, I suppose, for you? It's a big question this season, but essentially, like, if I offered you the Carabao Cup as a win, but no Champions League qualification, for instance, would you take that? Or if you weren't to win the Carabao Cup, what would be the least that you would then settle for? Um, we've got to win something. We have to win something. If we're watching this kind of football and it being divisive enough with Jose and Mourinho, the payoff, given the fact that we've had such great football under Marine, um, Pochettino before, the payoff has to be trophies. <sighs> Honestly, the League Cup doesn't mean a great deal to me. I want to win it desperately. I want to see us lift a trophy, but I've got to be honest and say that when under Pochettino, I had no interest in the League Cup. I didn't care whether we went through or, or not, unless we were playing Arsenal or Chelsea, then it's a different thing. But no, I think in terms of what gives us the best chance in the, in, in the next, in the, in the next season, winning the League Cup doesn't do anything for us. Getting the Champions League does. And that's just the, the way modern football is. So, I probably wouldn't, as much as I hate to say this, I probably wouldn't substitute the two in the hope that we can mount a title challenge and we can win the FA Cup and the Europa League. There's no reason why we can't win the FA Cup and there's absolutely no reason why we can't win the Europa League. We're still favourites to win the Europa League, in fact. So um, I think right now I'd be willing to gamble the League Cup and say no for Champions League football with the, the four... That, that we could win at least one of the three other trophies available to us. And football's about being bold and it's not about being sheepish. So yeah, that's what I'd go for, balls out. All right. Well, I guess what would be sackable as far as Mourinho? Fourth place is good enough and fifth place is the sack or and no trophies, for instance? or um, He won't get sacked if we finish fifth. No chance. No way. And you've got to think of the financial implications of sacking Mourinho. Uh, he has another year on his contract. I don't know what happened with COVID and whether it gets extended, but let's just take it on what it is at the moment. He has another year, a year and a half, 18 months at the end of this season. And um, that means that 18 months, that's twenty about £20 million pounds that, that Tottenham would have to pay him to, to get him to leave. Then if we went for someone like Nagelsmann or Brendan Rodgers, who probably within our grasp, then you'd have to pay another massive fee to release them. So you're talking about £30 million decision for one place in the league. You know, if if it qualified for it, it cost us as, as much as we were made in the Champions League to fire him. So you're hmm. talking about a £60 million swing in the wrong direction because he didn't qualify for the Champions League. If you also add the fact that this is a crazy year where football isn't as we know it, I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed this season more than any other in terms of other football. It's been great, but it isn't normal. So, um, yeah, no, I don't think you get sacked. I, I think seventh, eighth, you might be looking at it. And it also depends on the run going into it. So I, I think more a player, a manager gets sacked less on where he finishes in the league, you know, within the realms of reality to where, he, within the realms of expectation. Mm. Um, but he get, I don't think he gets... You know, if he goes into the end of the season, eight defeats on the bounce and we still still, still finish seventh or sixth or seventh, then he probably would get the sack. But, you know, I, I just can't see a world where he sacks Mourinho and I can't see a world where we don't we finish below fifth. I think we'll get into the Champions League. I think we'll we'll challenge for the title still, to be honest. Sounds like um, what I'm hearing is that you've put all your eggs in the Mourinho basket and uh, I, I'm not envious of that whatsoever as an Arsenal no, supporter. I, but, um, I definitely have. I definitely have. And and, and, and I, I, I'm finding myself, because of the football we're playing, getting angry at other fans and the football they're playing. Mm. Like, I look at Leicester and I now hate Leicester. It's not their fault. <laughs> they're playing lovely football. I hate them and I'm jealous of them because of the football they're playing. But I'm in on this until it's over. 
and I wish I hadn't have fallen so hard and drunk the Marino Kool-Aid to some degree because it's every game so important now. But fuck, I love my club. I love Tottenham. And whoever manages my football club, I'm going to be behind them until their position becomes untenable. And that's the same for Mourinho. It's the same for for um, uh, Pochettino. It wasn't the same for Sherwood. Should never have got the job. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you know, it's uh, fundamentally, I want my club to win. Hmm. And I want them to win every game. There are other fans like Chris, to be fair, on who who you've had you've had on here, who um, who really doesn't like Mourinho, doesn't like him at all, and I appreciate it. But for me, it's my club, and I want I want them to I want them to win, and I want them to I want I want Jose Mourinho to be as successful at Spurs as he's been elsewhere. And if he can do that, then he could literally park the bus every game. I wouldn't care because we haven't won a league title in sixty years. We've won two league cups in 30 years we haven't won an FA Cup for 40 years we've tried the sexy football hasn't worked it's always failing let's just give this a go for a season and a half it don't work we can go back to that yeah I guess if you live through the one day Ramos times the Mourinho times don't seem I, don't I seem lived through Peter Shreves in the 90s I lived through <laughs> I, I remember it it was shit it was so <laughs> shit well I guess um I think Joe might have one more one more Spurs question but speaking of things that maybe once upon a time that were, were shit but aren't so shit anymore, at least from, from your perspective, the North London Derby is a game that the dynamic within it has changed quite a lot over the past couple of decades, given that yep. I could pretty much routinely expect my team, Arsenal, to win every time. And that's not the case for the past getting towards a decade now, actually. Um, mm. How has your relationship with that game, Flav, kind of changed throughout it? Has it gotten more intense less intense easier to enjoy um yeah like kind of what's your perspective on the north london derby over time it's got easier for sure i i have the same trepidation before every north london derby every single one since i was old enough to understand what it was i hate it i have always hated it i always hate it i always will hate it like people, like there are some Spurs fans out there, and I'm sure there are some Arsenal fans out there that kind of we need each other. I don't agree. Like the best thing in the world for me would be Arsenal to get relegated. Like if it went out of business, all the better. Like I, I, if I had to see the back of Arsenal tomorrow, I apologise, but I have to see the back of Arsenal tomorrow. It would be too soon, right? That's how I feel. I grew up in Holloway. I grew up around Highbury. I went to Highbury Grove School. These are just for in the '90s. The times you mentioned about how dominant Arsenal were. Forever in their shadow, St. Tottenham's Day. They had every right, you had every right to ram it down our throats. Growing up around that, you learn to hate them very quickly, hate you very quickly. So um, that all of that feeling, because that shit happens in your formative years. So that today, when you see and you face Arsenal again, all that stuff comes back to the fore. So... I will never not hate the tie. It'll never not be nervous. I'll never not just wish to the end. And even if you lose, as soon as it's over, you start to process it. Like, I've seen Spurs lose to Arsenal so many times, more times than I care to remember. I've seen this just being swept aside by Arsenal. And because of all that, over the years, there's recent years where it's become much more even. And in the, cert in the last four years, in terms of the league title, it swung in Spurs' favour for the first time in my Spurs support in life. It doesn't feel the same as it did previously because, you know, by and large, I think what in terms of the least recent results, it's probably quite even. Like at home, we win. Away, you guys, when we play away, you guys tend to win or we get a draw at home, draw there. It's quite tight, basically. But back in the day when we hadn't beaten you for dec God don donkey's years, when we got the win... It's like there's, there's no describing it. It was like when we beat Chelsea for the first time under Martin Yo. You can't describe it. And, and that's what's fantastic about football because even when things are really bad and or, or really bad in relative terms, like we're not Bolton Wanderers and we never will be, but when it's respectively bad, that when you get that moment, that, that moment where everything works out and that explosion of emotion and, and joy, you can't rival it and you can't recapture it when you're good. Like it's great to be successful, but it's also not. Like the better you become, and Arsenal, Arsenal, you guys, you'll know this better than me because you had what you had under Wenger for a long, long time, very successful, loads of FA Cups, like four or five under his tutelage. 
Um, you got the invincible season. Once you're up there, it's hard to reconcile when it when it starts to dip, as all, all teams do dip. And I mean, I don't have a great deal of time for Arsenal fan TV, but you can see where their maniacal reaction to every result comes from is because they're used to winning and success really does damage a fan base. And um, I, I don't think I'll ever recapture the feeling I had inside a football stadium than, than, than the one that we had when we beat Arsenal 5-1 in the League Cup in 2008, when they ran us his second game or something. That was, I can't describe how amazing that night was. And I've never felt that way ever again. And this slow sort of slow rise to being decent in inverted commas has created expectation that breeds contempt in the fan base. And that's part of the reason why we're in this situation with Jose Mourinho now is because we've got to a situation where you can attract these, that kind of manager added to that, that all of the expectation of the fans that when things don't go wrong, it's a little bit toxic and poisonous, certainly on Twitter, if you, if you want to take that as a dichotomy of a fan base, which is not necessarily the best thing to do. But yeah, um, I don't know, did I answer your question? Sorry, mate, I rambled. Uh, and then some, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, um, yeah, we've got um, one last Spurs question for you, Flav. So um, next week, it's a well, every, every week's a big week. There's so many games at the moment. But next Monday, we've got Wickham in the FA Cup. And then obviously on Thursday, it's the big game against Liverpool in the Premier League. So what I wanted to ask is, do you think that we essentially, for the Wiccan game, we, ha- we have to rest the, the full starting eleven, let the squad play and just trust them? And then for that Liverpool game, are, are we going to beat Liverpool next week? Um, no. we Yes, we'll beat Liverpool. I think I'm, I'm, I'm confident that we will beat them. Wickham, uh, no, we don't rest everybody. Um, we treat it as an important tie. It is an important tie. We need, like, more so than the League Cup, we need to win this one. He didn't, you know, when we were playing Marine, he didn't rest everybody. Uh, I think, did Adavera play? Or, yeah, he played. Yeah, yeah Adavera played. played. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's, there's room to, you know, to bring people in. Venice, like, people like Kane and Son shouldn't start. Hoybier shouldn't start. Um, Dyer shouldn't start. Uh, you know, and Dombele definitely shouldn't start. But you use the squad that you have. Bale should start. Uh, God's sake, please. That, that, <laughs> let's just just one performance, and then he can bugger off back to Real Madrid if he wants to. But yeah, the, yeah. I mean, you got to play. You got to respect them, and you got to respect the. Com- it's cliched, but respect the competition. Don't throw it away by playing an understrength team that can't play together. So yeah, definitely, um, definitely, definitely play a strong side. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like you said, we want to win the FA Cup, and let's hope we massively. do. Let's hope we do. Let's hope our other ex guest, David Wheeler, doesn't do well for Wickham. <laughs> oh, <would>. wow. <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, Dave, uh, David Wheeler does produce the, the goods. <laughs> on the day. But otherwise, um, yeah, we've got one little sort of game to to wrap things up and um, pay some, paying some tribute to the fighting cock. I, I recognize that the, the slogan is Love the Shirt. So that's yeah. the name of this game that we're about to play. This is Love the Shirt. Hopefully no copyright issues. Um, on the uh, the subject of love, though, it's a dating game, even. Okay. Bear with me. <laughs> so I have two very eligible bachelors on the line, whether they know it or not. And I have three absolute <laughs> worldies of mystery football kits just waiting to be worn out, so to speak, Lovely. by these lucky guys. So if they play their cards right, they're going to get a date. The way it's going to work, you guys are going to have the opportunity to ask the football kits two questions each. And then when you're done getting to know them, I have a question for you, but we'll get to that later. Um, if you think you know what the kits are at any point, keep it to yourself until, until the end. So bachelor number one, that's, that's you, Flav. Um, okay. You can ask two questions to each of the kits. You're going to be asking kit number one first, then it will be Joe's turn, and then we'll move on to number two. As far as the questions, um, I think, you know, like the type of sponsor, the year of the kit, the make, um, the maybe like an accent color design all of those are uh fair game questions so what would you like to know flav about kit number one your first question. uh just quick are they are these or just spurs kits or any kits these are premier league kits premier league kits okay um i'd like to know the color of the kit okay <laughs> so it's brown wow and i've got two you've got two um is it worn by spurs yeah it is worn by spurs so okay whether or not joe 
has a whole lot to add to that. Joe, do you have any questions for kit number one? Hold on. Uh, what, Joe can use my answers. Shit. Makes, I should have gone more subtle. We're going to learn a little bit about each of the kits, and then one of you is going to get first dibs. Depending. Okay. So, Go for it. Um, Joe, what would you like to know about kit number one? Um, what, what was the sponsor? It is a Puma sponsored kit. Okay. Um, do, do you know, um, to be, to be very specific, do you know the, um, the sort of shirt sponsor as opposed to the, they were a betting or a casino. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, all okay. right. Sounds like between the two of you, you probably have that figured out, but we're going to get back to it later. So kit number two, Flav, you have two questions for kit number two. Um, uh, what was the sponsor on the shirt? I won't give the actual sponsor, but I'll say that it's a, it's video game related or like arcade oh, arcade related. I know what it is already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Was it worn by Arsenal? It was, it was. So we've figured out these two kits seemingly. Joe, do you have a couple? Well, of not necessarily this. Okay. Well, Who knows if Joe knows? I do. I do have a, was it a home or an away kit? It's an away kit. Okay. And um, was it yellow? No, I wouldn't call it yellow, but it's not far off. Okay. All right. Okay. So now, now, Flav, moving on to, um, to kit number three. You have two questions. Um, uh, well, what color was it? That would be the most obvious. It's a white <laughs> kit. Oh, that doesn't give me Primarily. Much. Does the team play in the Premier League now? Yes, they do. Okay. You know, um, is it a team from London? It is. Do they play at Craven Cottage? <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. They do. So we've got kind of the questions out of the way to figure out who has dibs. I'm going to ask you guys a question, and then depending on who gets it right... Um, you're going to have dibs on guessing the kits. And I guess maybe we'll see if one of you can get two. And if one of you can get two, then you'll be the winner. So my question to determine who gets to pick first is based on Wikipedia and Wikipedia alone, how many total career goals does Harry Kane have for club? And uh, I'll let Flav, you can guess first and we'll just see who gets closer. Um, I think you got it the other day. Was it 207? Well, or was it 208? <laughs> I'll, we'll see. Joe? I think I'm going to go 208. So I'm going to give it to Flav because he oh. scored exactly a 207 goals apparently for Spurs, although considering the other loans he's had, it's uh, 200. Or actually, I guess in that case, maybe I have to give it to Joe because it's 223. Oh. Oh, what was he, did you say club goals? Oh, oh yeah, I would have gone for two hundred. Oh, I, in fairness, I did. Th I thought you said Spurs, so I don't. I don't know how that. It's. It, I don't know if that confuses. Even me. I, I kind of uh, didn't prep well enough for the questions, and I don't have <laughs> one on hand. I'm just going to give it to Joe. Um, okay, fair enough. Yeah, kind of. It was Bo Bobby Smith when he scored two hundred eight. Yeah. That, no, I. You. You didn't know that. I just told you. <laughs> Joe, so. There's these three kits. You have priority to pick one of them to take out on a lovely date, but you're going to have to kind of tell me who they are and yeah, everything. Well, not necessarily everything, but I'm going to want a pretty good description of the kit. Um, so who do you want to take out? And I guess, what are they wearing? Uh, <laughs> what are they wearing? Um, well, they're wearing the kit I want to take out is where, well, it's, it's a brown kit. Um, it's got a betting company called Mansion on it. It's a Puma kit. Um Berbatov once scored a great goal in it at Craven Cottage, I think. Um, it's um, yeah, it's a Spurs kit, the team I love. Uh, I think it was um, in 2007 they wore it, or around then. Yeah. Um, so, it. yeah, that is the kit I, I want to take on a, a date. <laughs> well, congratulations, Joe. You, yeah, are going to be whisking this this kit away for the evening. Um, Flav, the, you know... Yeah not all um lost you still have the opportunity for a date it might be with an arsenal kit it might be with a fulham kit but yeah. i guess um you can pick one of those and obviously we know the clubs at this point but do you have a little more info about the one that you'd like to take out i i definitely i, I have no idea which fulham kit it is but <laughs> i'd rather have no date than take the arsenal kit out so <laughs> I'm going to say just for the purpose of the game i think the arsenal one is it blue and yellow it's like gold and navy. 
with the the Sega um, sponsor, which was kind of interesting because I believe the home kit had uh, Dreamcast. That's right. Yeah, it, it, it reminds me of sort of uh, Henri and Vieira. That's, the image that's I'm looking right. at is Bergkamp, but yeah, it's definitely those. Uh, like, prime. And him. And him. <laughs> a uh, famous was Tottenham good. fan, Dennis, Dennis Bergkamp. Um, yeah, well, was um the uh the oh man philip i don't know i have no idea what what year it is joe stitched me up because you could have gone for a little, little bit more specific uh well, let me ask you guys it. or you can each ask one more question about the, okay the Fulham i've got a question so, but, you can ask me go on joe all right uh uh did it did it, did it have i'm trying to go for this because this just popped into my head and i'm gonna <laughs> Does it have Pizza Hut on the front of it? That's that's the one. That's the one. Is it? <laughs> and um, I think they only wore that kit with that sponsorship for a season. So essentially, you. Could... Yeah, it was it was terrible, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I guess you you didn't you you did leave with an Arsenal kit, but you also left with a Fulham kit. I don't know if that's a win. I didn't leave with an Arsenal. I didn't leave with an Arsenal. Kit. <laughs> Uh, I, I can't remember the kit other than the Pizza Hut logo, to be fair. Yeah, I remember uh, Louis Saha was um, banging goals. That's in the that. image I'm looking What's, at. It's Louis... a really cool kit. It's white. It has like black down the sides and then it's an Adidas kit. So it has a collar and it has these like the, the, the three stripes are uh, red. It's, it's quite cool. Oh, that's um, fine. And I guess um, Louis Saha off the back of a great season in that kit. Probably what signed for Manchester United. And then eventually ended up at Tottenham. So there's a lot of Tottenham going on. In this. Yeah, he scored against Arsenal as well, Lisa. And yeah, Mike Dean even celebrated when he scored. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, well, on, on that note, um, that's actually all we've um, got time for today. So as always, a big thank you to my co-host, um, Kaitel, and also an even bigger thank you to Flav. Um, you know, it's been, a, it's been great to chat to you and genuinely um, a privilege for me too. It's like I said, um, the Fighting Cop was literally the first football podcast I ever listened to. So yeah, no, I hope you enjoyed yourself, Flav. I did, mate. Thank you, thank you for having on. So, sorry, um, took so long to get get it sorted. But yeah, no, it's been great. It's been fun. I I, I didn't know what to expect, and uh, I've done games on podcasts for a long while. So um, yeah, no, thanks for having me. Great, uh, great to be here. Any time in the future for anything, just reach out to me, and I'll be happy to do it. Brilliant. No, we will do. And um, we've obviously um, we've mentioned a few of your projects today. But for our listeners, um, what's the best way for them to sort of keep up to date with everything you're doing? Well, I think um, obviously Spurs related. Then it's the love the shirt on the or, the, or just Google the fighting cock and you'll find our website. Um, but if you're not into Spurs or you don't want to listen to, then yeah, check out the 15 minute podcast. Uh, I think it has any something for everybody, and um, yes, one of my favourite things to do each week. So yeah, check out the 50, 15 minute podcast with Flav and Windy. Uh, and if you've got 15 minutes that you need to fill, you're walking for a bus in the bath, having a shower, lying in bed with the missus. Listen to the 15 minutes podcast. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, no, please make sure everybody does that. And also um, remember to follow us on our social media channels. So that's at United Mates FP, and that's on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And then you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. You just have to type United Mates Football Podcast into YouTube too. So that's all for now. Thank you very much and goodbye. <laughs>